Hello everybody, it's Melanie and I hope you've been enjoying uh, Katya's text. I'm here to try to put it in a different context, maybe give you some more practical use and uh, try to explain a little bit more what she meant uh, with her lesson so far. So we will continue and look at monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes and let's Pretend you're choosing an essential oil for your client and that essential oil needs to be light and gentle and fresh and discreet and uh, something that uh, will not be aggressive and that kind of smell you would uh, expect to be uh, an essential oil that has a, a lot of, that is rich in monoterpenes because monoterpenes are volatile molecules you know that they are high notes and that you smell them quickly and that they don't really linger so another thing you would do is you would have to blend them with an oil that has lower notes to make it last but let's go back to monoterpenes and the oils you would look for are usually a conifers, a pine oil or uh, junipers tend to have a large section of monoterpenes mm, and most of all it is our citrus oils so so let's take a look at this lemon right here and uh, and maybe we'll find out some new things right away when you see the overview of the essential oil in dropsmith you see the pie chart and you can quickly just go over it and find out the percentages of the groups but we are interested in the detailed report so here we are jumping to detailed report and uh, the way to use and to approach this is start small so when you look at the components first what we did was we put it into groups and functional groups so here we have hydrocarbons alcohols, aldehydes, and all your typical groups you would find in uh, aromatherapy literature. But let's look at hydrocarbons. This is what we're talking about. We went uh, a step further and divided these groups into 80 subgroups. So hydrocarbons have monoterpenes, sesquiterpenes, diterpenes, aromatic hydrocarbons, and other. This is how we divided uh, all of these groups. Um, and this will tell you again a little bit more about their biochemical properties that they share and maybe this is a great start for you so you see that this lemon essential oil has 90% uh, a little bit over 95% of monoterpenes and these are the orange the orange color in dropsmith so when you see a lot of orange you know that there are a lot of monoterpenes in uh, that oil. But I uh, always recommend that although these, um, these groups undergo a similar reaction and share biochemical uh, properties, it is more precise to look at individual components. So when you look further you will see all the monoterpenes, all the uh, chemical components that add up to this 95% uh, of monoterpenes. And you can look at the single chemical component and by clicking on it, all these ones that have arrows have um, properties and references as well. So I recommend for precise use and for more clear uh, intention to look at the properties of the actual chemical components. This will tell you much more and, uh, and you might get some new insights on how to use the oil and in which direction to, you, you want to move. Okay, and of course, as usual, if we found more details, we included that right there. So here we are looking at limonene because it is uh, the highest um, represented chemical component in this essential oil, almost 70%. But please do not forget that there is a whole bunch of other ones in there adding uh, 
their value and their synergy to the oil. And what does limonene look like? I prepared a little picture for you to show you uh, how these uh, monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes look like and that perhaps might help you understand um, why they work the way they do. So as Katya has mentioned, monoterpenes have are very very small chemical components that have only 10 carbons and as you see sesquiterpenes that have 15. So they are much heavier, much bigger, they have uh, also, that impacts, of course, their shelf life, something we didn't mention right now. So, um, sesquiterpenes, oils rich in sesquiterpenes, have a longer shelf life than monoterpenes, obviously. And that also goes for when you use these um, oils in, uh, in your blends, that the first thing you will smell are monoterpenes, for example, but it is also the first thing that will evaporate and you will smell them for about 20 minutes, half an hour, and then um, they're gone. So with, with sesquiterpenes, uh, you smell them. You don't smell them right away. It kind of comes to you. And also these uh, oils tend to last and last. The smell is... Uh, longer but uh, not everybody likes the smell of uh, essential oils uh, rich in uh, sesquiterpenes because they tend to be heavy and earthy and they have uh, a very strong character they're also their odor intensity is strong um, and the odor intensity of oils such as our our lemon it's it's very s gentle and light and that is why a lot of people like these oils because they're discreet and uh, oils such as vetiver or patchouli are in your face kind of oils you, you really uh, smell them strongly another thing i wanted to say about monoterpenes is oils rich in monoterpenes uh, tend to have um, tend to sensitize the skin so so when you see an oil with a lot of uh, orange color in our database check out the safety and how uh, you would apply it uh, because of their they oxidate very quickly they can also uh, sensitize the skin and another thing is they're because they're so tiny they penetrate the skin quite quickly and something I found with true with few of uh, monoterpenes like limonene and beta pinene and alpha pinene as well they are all um, penetration enhancers so not only uh, do they penetrate quickly because they're small they also enhance how quickly uh, it does penetrate through skin so these are just things to watch out for and uh, that might help you choose an essential oil for your client and uh, Another thing on my picture here uh, I put to remind me is to show you that uh, camazolene is quite often put in the same mm, group as, uh, as sesquiterpenes. But if you look closely, sesquiterpenes have 15 carbons and camazolene has only 14. So in our database, you will not find it under sesquiterpenes, you will find it actually under other. So just a heads up there uh, to know what is where. And again, you can click on it and check out the, the properties we found for, for camazolene and, uh, and have some fun with that. So for your further study, I guess, and uh, I would like to introduce uh, a little um, assignment. So I wanted you to compare essential oils rich in monoterpenes. And we said that these are citrus oils usually. So perhaps you are going to choose one of the citrus oils or compare citruses between themselves. That would be interesting as well because uh, not all of them are the same. You see... Uh, lime can be quite different and so is the bergamot so you can compare them and see how their chemical um, composition is uh, different 
and how does that affect the oil but let's for now just choose lemon and then another one from the conifers so I'll choose a pine oil a typical one a Scots pine for example although we have quite a lot of interesting furs and pine oils so you can check out those and how uh, how their chemical uh, chemical components look like and the properties but for now let's just stick to the familiar ones it's the same with the junipers let's look at juniper we have quite a few interesting and rare um, junipers in our database so do check them out and um, and get to know new oils it is always good to be one step ahead I guess um, so let's say I choose this one but then I changed my mind I can always take it away and choose another one so perhaps this one but then again why not compare them because this one is a juniper uh, from the leaves and this one is from the berries so that might be interesting to compare so let's compare that so for your assignment what I wanted you to to see for yourself is uh, is how similar or different are the the properties of the essential oils that are rich in monoterpenes so these are the properties of the essential oils and see for example they're all antibacterial and if you click on it again you have the references antifungal they're all uh, repellents as well so these are their uh, properties that we found uh, based on scientific data but I would also like for you to to go the next step and uh, look at the traditional use because traditional use has a different kind of value and for example these are you three of these are used for acne and then you will notice that often essential oils that have uh, uh, a lot of monotropines are quite often used for respiratory system or cellulite uh, colds and things like that maybe that will give you um, different kind of infections you see so that might give you another insight another way of looking at essential oils that are uh, rich in monoterpenes uh, another holistic approach is looking at which part of the uh, part of the plant was distilled so for example here we have berry and zest which is both the um, the fruit part of the plant and and then we have the needle and the leaves which is a completely different character sometimes it gives a different character to the oil and I always ask myself what was the role of the volatiles in that part of the plant at the time of distillation and that might give you new clues and ideas and respect for the oils that you use so as I said first compare their properties based on scientific data and then we move on to the holistic approach and the traditional use and that will give us more information on the oils we use as well a more broad uh, view I guess and then what I would like you to do is compare uh, the chemical components. So I prepared a little PDF for you to compare the most common ones that we find alpha pinene, beta pinene and then the limonene. Just look at uh, their percentages and how does that affect the oil? Does it affect the oil? Are they similar, similar or are they uh, different? And uh, does that surprise you what you found? how much are they similar and different that's what we're looking at here the uh, properties of monoterpenes um, I hope you have you will have fun I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll come back soon talking more uh, in the next lesson so talk to you soon bye bye